What did the Denver Broncos plan to do around Russell Wilson's talent on the offensive side of the ball in 2022? Well, they plan to cook a lot with Russ's input. He's going to be the chef. Plus, we hear a little bit from NFL League owners, meetings from George Payton and his ideas to where the Broncos stand right now inside the AFC West. Plus, we answer some Broncos fans' mailbag questions on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and 9 News Broncos country. Thank you so much for making this podcast your first listen of the day, whether you listen on your favorite audio podcasting platform or if you watch us here on YouTube. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. And just a reminder, we're going to up the ante a little bit here with our jersey giveaway. We will do a jersey giveaway. We'll give away the Russell Wilson Color Rush jersey at 8K subscribers. We're just about... Uh, maybe 1,500 away from that. And then at 10K, we will do another jersey giveaway where one lucky listener in Broncos country gets to choose a jersey of a player of their choice. We get that and much more. But Sarah, my friend, hey, we got a lot to talk about here today. Brand new weeks ahead. NFL League owner meetings are going on. So that means that most teams have transitioned away from free agency and towards the NFL draft. This is a fun time, my friend. It's the best. I mean, it's the best. And we get to wake up every day just knowing that Russell Wilson is the Denver Broncos quarterback. So, I mean, it doesn't get much better. We uh, That's exactly why we're, I mean, we're pumping fists. We're raising the arms and the thumbnail because it's worth celebrating, right? And I think we got a, a kind of just a little glimpse of that with the interview George Payton did. And, you know, executives, they like to play down. Well, you know, it's all about regular season wins and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude. You got voted the best draft. You got Russell Wilson. And now, I mean, things can really start to take off. So I think for Denver Broncos fans, this is a very exciting time. Like we've talked about, Cody, the NFL draft now gets to be kind of the icing on the cake for this great offseason. I'm so excited about it. And obviously, one of the things that's going to come out of this whole Russell Wilson news is the fact that the Broncos offense now I mean, Sarah, it's kind of refreshing to hear it, but this is going to be an offense that's predicated off the strengths of the players and not what the coaches just want to do. And we've heard Nathaniel Hackett say that since coming in. He's going to build this player first, scheme second. This is great news here for the Denver Broncos. But in terms of Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett was asked at the NFL League owners meetings what his plan was with Russell Wilson and the offense. And this was his quote about what the offense will look like with Russell Wilson. He said this, and I quote, once we get to know him, understand him, we'll build it around him. So what is it going to be? It's going to be what Russell likes to do. Sarah, if this was like the Vic Fangio, Pat Shermer coach team, this would have never been in the atmosphere of any kind of possibility here for the Broncos. They're going to build this thing around what Russ wants to do. And it's going to be a perfect collaboration. This is good news for what the offense could be. You mean to tell me that Nathaniel Hackett didn't say, look, I'm the coach and Russell's the player. And so that's that's how this relationship's going to work. He didn't say that. That's, <laughs> oh man, what a refreshing twist uh, and turn of events here. No, I think, you know, what's really cool about this. And I think I'm sure people have already thought about this, but I don't know if I've said it on the podcast or if we've talked about this, but the fact that Nathaniel Hackett was able to help coach Aaron Rodgers the last couple seasons, part of the group effort. Of course, we know Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. I'm not trying to say Nathaniel Hackett is the reason why Aaron Rodgers won back-to-back -back MVPs, but there is something to be said about the fact that what a player likes to do, you go ahead and you let them do it. That was a big part of the issues that Russell Wilson had with the Seattle Seahawks, wasn't it? Is the fact that they weren't necessarily on the same page in terms of, well, who's even going to be the offensive coordinator? Or what kind of plays are they going to call? Or how are they going to want to run things? I love that Nathaniel Hackett is allowing Russell Wilson to kind of dictate what the offense is going to look like. It reminds me of what we had with Peyton Manning and Adam Gase, and I don't think Adam Gase really had a choice, Cody, but Nathaniel <laughs> Hackett has a choice, and his choice is to let Russell Wilson cook, and I Ooh. absolutely love that. Well, here's another thing, too. What can the Broncos do to build their offense around Russell Wilson? There's this narrative going out there, and I'm seeing this in Denver media, too, where Russell Wilson's not the type of quarterback that likes to attack the middle of the field. And, and Sarah, I want to challenge that narrative here. Here is what the Seattle offense used to be predicated off of, a strong 
run game. Minus when they got into the red zone in the Super Bowl and they wanted to decide to throw it from the one yard line. Thanks a lot, Pete Carroll. Outside, that's a strong run game and then taking shots downfield, play action. However, one thing that Russell Wilson really liked was being able to utilize Tyler Lockett, not only just as a deep ball threat, but across the middle of the field. And there was a game where he went over 200 yards receiving against the Arizona Cardinals just a couple years ago against Patrick Peterson when he was with the Cardinals too. That right there is where Russ can attack. You know what? I think when you have an offense there that where you can run the ball, which I think the Broncos is going to be very balanced this season. I think the philosophy will be run the ball, also pass the ball. But it's not just going to be a deep passing game. It's going to be we're going to attack short. We're going to attack the intermediate. When you have a quarterback with the talent that Russell Wilson has, you're not limited. That's why they call him Mr. Unlimited. He can throw it to the short, the intermediate, and the deep routes, which is what the Broncos want to do. And obviously, I think what we've seen so far this past week with Russell Wilson working with the receivers, the tight ends, Lloyd Cushenberry getting snaps there, Andrew Beck fullback getting work in there. Things are going to ramp up. And, and look, coming up here in just a moment, we're going to find out a little bit more about what the Broncos have in the works here in the next couple of weeks as we build up towards the NFL season, folks. We're going to hear from George Payton at the Broncos and the NFL League owners meetings from his perspective on how the team can compete inside the AFCS. You get that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about our good friends over there at Bilt Bar. And ladies and gentlemen, our friends at Bilt Bar have nine amazing, delicious flavors in a 100% milk chocolate covered protein bar, plus the occasional limited time flavor that you could choose from, whether it's the puffs, whether it's the bites, they have you covered at Bilt.com. My personal favorite from the original is the peanut butter brownie. There's the double chocolate. There's the salted caramel. Or you like the churro puffs like me. Or you like the banana cream puffs like Sarah does. Make sure you go to built.com today to see the limited flavors in action today. Plus, if you need a little bit of extra fuel to get you through your day every single day, Built Bars contain 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and only 4 grams of sugar. That is tremendous value for something that's covered in 100% milk chocolate. So, don't waste any time. Go to built.com right after this episode of the Lockdown Broncos, and when you go to checkout, make sure you use promo code LOCK15, and that's going to get you 15% off your next order at build.com. What does Broncos general manager George Payton think about how the team can compete inside the AFC West despite the arms race that is ongoing? We'll get to that on this portion of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. But before we do that, real quick, a mile-high salute to everybody in Broncos country. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to us or to watch us on YouTube, making Lockdown Broncos your first listener today. We appreciate you so much, Broncos country. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your interaction in the YouTube comment section, on social media, at Coach. Work NFL at Lockdown Broncos at Sarah Bettinger. Make sure you keep sending us your tweets, and we'll get to our mailbag a little bit later where we answer Broncos fans' tweets that they sent into both Sarah and I. But Sarah, obviously, this is a big week over the weekend. The NFL League owners meetings have happened, and obviously, some of the things that come out of these meetings. But pros rule changes, and obviously the overtime rule change could be something that gets implemented. I'll be very intrigued to see if that passes. There's been some traction, but one league spokesperson said it is hard to get 24 votes of approval, and I imagine that's going to be a process the Broncos find out here soon with the ownership situation because 24 votes will be or what's needed for the next owner to kind of take place here. But George Payton, you know, the sunny weather there in Palm Beach, like I said, it was a beautiful backdrop. Phil Milani interviewing him. You got the sand. They got the waves and the sun. It was a good day in Broncos country on Sunday but you know more importantly it's the optics as to what's going on here and I think that for Broncos country there are two pending free agents from this Broncos football team that have yet to sign anywhere and Broncos fans have been asking us in our Broncos Twitter community group I'll tell you about that a little bit later about whether or not the Broncos are going to bring back Melvin Gordon or Kareem Jackson one thing that George Payton said, Sarah, and it's always interesting that he mentioned, he said, we've been in contact with their agents. They've talked with them. I know Kareem Jackson himself personally has not heard from the Broncos. He's heard every communication from his agent, but no definitive offer just yet. I have a hunch, Sarah, that because of the fact that George Payton mentioned, you know, I've had conversations with their agents, and he said one of the things, we can't bring everybody back, makes me think that neither of these guys will be back in 2022, which is kind of unfortunate, but I understand it's the business side of things. That's kind of the way that I see it as well, Cody. You know, I think that as much as Broncos country would love to see, well, for sure, Kareem Jackson back. I feel like that's a pretty unanimous, almost un borderline unanimous among the people that I interact with on Twitter, maybe you as well. They want to see Kareem Jackson come back. For me personally, I feel like it's time for the Broncos to move forward there, whether it's 
you take that leap of faith with Caden Stearns and make him the starter, or you go out and make a signing like Tyron Matthew and really just kind of, I mean, I mean, blockbuster type of move shake there, like up. I've said before, <laughs> shake it up. You're a contending team, make contending team moves. So I would love to see that, but I just think with Kareem Jackson's 33, 34 years old, whatever he is this season, I would say it's time to move on. And for Melvin Gordon, you got two pretty darn good years out of him right before the age of 30. I think now is the perfect time to kind of tap out on that and tap in to this NFL draft class at the running back position, which I believe is very good. And I think the Broncos have the kind of picks to go out and maybe draft one or possibly two guys and really upgrade that spot. Well, George Payton said it, and it's funny because now I, I can hear it in my head when he talks about draft picks. We have nine picks in this year's draft. We have the chance to move up if we want to. We have the chance to trade back. It's almost like what we got last year, sir. And he said, mm-hmm. you know, I, he's like, knowing me, I'd love to trade back in around one, but we'll have to see how it happens. Interesting thing to monitor at the end of round one at 29, you have the Kansas City Chiefs at 30, you have the Kansas City Chiefs with a couple, with a couple of the first round picks they acquired. So it's going to be very unlikely Denver is going to get into a spot, one of those spots. They might have to leapfrog ahead of them to get somebody special, hopefully a Trey McBride. We'll see what prospects are on the table there. But in terms of some things that are coming up, one thing that George Payton said, he was asked a question about where do you see the Broncos competing inside the AFC West? And I think he gave a very open and honest answer here, which I think is good. Like the optics, I think, for Broncos country have certainly improved. But George Payton is speaking the truth here when he says the fact is, uh, you know, competing in the AFC West, it's hard for us to really talk about competing in our division until we do. Right. So we take a look at the Kansas City Chiefs. Denver's been swept by them continuously. They've been swept by the Las Vegas Raiders. They've always kind of split games with the Chargers in the last couple of years going one and one there. They've been competitive in some of these games and some other games. They have not been as competitive against AFC West divisional opponents. But right now, the gap is closed a little bit, but George Payton is right. Until we actually see the Broncos compete in the division, we have to take it for what it is as a grain of salt and understand that there's a lot of work to do in between. Yeah, you got to love George Payton's taking the high road and making sure that everybody knows he's the most humble guy in the room, even though we know (laughs) George. I mean, everybody saw you got awarded the best draft class of 2021 your first year on the job. And then in your second offseason on the job, you go out and trade for Russell Wilson and get an MVP caliber quarterback. So. Of course, George Payton's not going to walk into these meetings and these interviews wearing a cape or anything like that, but he's right. I mean, you do have to go prove things on the field, but man, in terms of improving a team and drastically changing the culture around with just a couple, I mean, uh, in in reality, Cody, I mean, it's just a couple moves. We know it takes so much more work than just what we just what we say, and it's, it's a couple moves. You know, on paper, it's what it is, but man, it takes so much work for George Payton, so you love to see he's not he's not going to go out there and be bragging and talking smack. No, you're not going to get that from anybody. But man, behind the scenes, you got to believe. I mean, you got to. I, I would love to be a fly on the wall with him and Nathaniel yeah. Hackett some days and just see like what what are they actually saying after the after making these moves because they've got to feel great about where they're at. Well, and one of the things, too, is putting everything into perspective. Winning games is super important. And one thing that Peyton said, too, in terms of honesty, he says, look, hey, my family doesn't try to, you know, fill my head up. They don't try to blow smoke up my rear end by saying, he's like, the fact is, we won seven games in 2021. I'm a 7-10 and GM. No one cares if you win in the offseason. Everyone cares when you win in the regular season, and we keep everything in perspective. So while you can win in the offseason with some of the moves, ultimately it has to be the on-field product with residual, like, tangible results in terms of winning. I like that about George Payton, but the process of where those wins actually happen, Sarah, coming up here in just a few weeks, the Broncos are going to get back on the field together. I mean, they're already working with Russell Wilson for the most part, the offensive guys are, but the Broncos offseason conditioning program begins on April 11th at the team facility, and that will carry them all the way through May towards the end of June. Then, And once they get to June, they're going to have a month off before they report back to training camp. Things are getting exciting. Sarah, as as quick as the season has ended, we are one step closer to Broncos football. I'm stoked about it. And it's going to go fast, right? I mean, I think these next couple months, it's going to go really quick. So brace yourselves, Broncos country. Just enjoy this process. Enjoy the offseason. Enjoy this honeymoon period because pretty soon it's going to be getting crazier with people talking about training camp battles, with people talking about (laughs) charting Russell Wilson's accuracy during practice and all that stuff. Let's enjoy this honeymoon period. It's going to go fast, but it's exciting to see they're going to be getting out onto the field 
rather quickly. You know, I want to see how everyone on the team responds to having Russell Wilson at the workouts. You know, how is that going to change everybody's work habits? We've talked about this before with, you know, I mentioned this specifically with a guy like Bobby Wagner and free agency affecting the work habits of your young inside linebackers. I just imagine in a similar way, how much is Russell Wilson going to impact everybody on this team with the expectation level that he sets as the leader of the team? And, and that's another thing. There's a clear leader of this team on the roster at the quarterback position. Now everybody on the 90-man roster has somebody that they can follow, and it all starts with these, these OTAs, these conditioning workouts. How hard are you going to work in April to make sure that you're playing games next February? That's going to be huge, and so I'm glad that Russell Wilson is leading that charge. I'm glad you said that too. And look, the Broncos offense, a lot of the offensive players, they've already seen the beginning benefits of working with Russ. I'm sure those defensive guys are excited to be like, hey, when can we practice? When can we go do things with Russ? How can we cover Russ? You know, how many interceptions can we get off Russ? Like that's going to be something that's going to hold merit in training camp and obviously the bragging rights. But I, I like what you mentioned there too. Russ is a bona fide, legitimate leader that this team has not had at that position that can back it up with their play. Teddy was a rah-rah guy, great leadership. We go back to the sound clip last Last year, Vaughn saying, I haven't, you know, we love those pep talks. We haven't heard anything like that since 18, man. You know, keep that up. This is the next level. This is Russell Wilson, future Hall of Famer. Like the Broncos had a future Hall of Famer back in 2015. You know, obviously from 2012, 2015, those are some good years. And maybe the Broncos can ride that out for another 10 years. Hopefully, sir, here in Broncos country. But mm -hmm. Broncos country, coming up here in just a moment, we're going to ask some Broncos fans mailbag questions. What's the latest on the ownership situation? Plus, what might Ejiro Evro's defense look like in comparison to Vic Fangio's? We answer that and much more coming up here in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about the other sponsor. Today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. It's our good friends over there at Athletic Greens. And I first tried Athletic Greens. I've had friends that have tried it. I've had friends that have used it. And I never once thought of trying it until Locked On partnered with Athletic Greens and they sent it to my doorstep. I said, you know what? I'm going to have the opportunity to try it right here. So one thing I do every single morning, I wake up, Sarah, and I fill up 12 ounces of ice cold water in the bottle that they sent over. And I take one scoop of the athletic green formula that contains over 75 minerals and vitamins all together that support not only just gut health, mental clarity, and just immune system boost support. You get the added benefits of feeling great. And after about three weeks of taking it every single day with the 12 ounces of water, Sarah, I feel really good every single day. I have more energy. Energy, and I feel like I can conquer the day, especially with my workouts. And I got to thank Athletic Greens for that. And right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase today. All you have to do is visit Athletic Greens greens.com slash NFL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, we're going to answer some Broncos country mailbag questions. And Sarah, you know, every time we put the tweet out on Twitter, we get so many dang responses. And I wish we could answer every single response here on the show. Instead, that would be like a two hour long podcast for mm -hmm. all the responses. So I try to filter out as many as I can, and we will spread them throughout the week. So if you didn't get your question answered now, we will answer it in one of the future episodes this week on the podcast here. We're going to get to three today. And we'll get to the rest a little bit later on throughout the week here. Started things off here with Blue Ridge Broncos. Sarah, he asked the question. I'll have you answer this one. You're King George for day one of the NFL draft. Who would you move back into round one for if they happen to fall? And this is a really interesting class as is. I know you're deep into the NFL draft. I'm beginning my deep dive study on various prospects here. The Broncos pick a number 64. But if they could find a way to trade back into round one, Sarah, who would you like the Broncos to keep an eye on? Well, if they can move up that high, Cody, which is, is that's a, that'll be a steep price to move up. But at the same Almost time, like a whole round, like <laughs> it is. Yeah, an entire round move up into 31 or 32 and see if one of those. I mean, I know Detroit has two picks and they pick right after 32. So they might be a logical spot if they're trying to get something else. And we know they have trade history with the Denver Broncos. So maybe keep an eye on the Detroit Lions at pick number 32 if the Broncos want to get a first round pick. But for me. Since this is kind of coming off the cuff, I just recently did a mock draft where I feel like 
man, at the end of round one, there's a guy, a, a pass rusher out of Minnesota, Boye Mafe, Cody. I mean, he is a absolute freak of an athlete, a 10 on the relative athletic score. I mean, just all across the board, an outstanding athlete with great production at Minnesota off the edge. And I know that people are going to say, well, the Broncos just signed Randy Gregory and this and that, and we got Bradley Chubb. And I'm I'm just going to say, I don't think the Broncos are done at the edge position. No. I still think that's a spot that they need to address. I don't think you can bank on Bradley Chubb staying healthy this season. I don't even know if you can bank on Randy Gregory being healthy all season, any or anyone on the roster for that matter. But at a, at a position like this, I think you need to have at least three guys that are legit off the like starting caliber guys off the edge. And I know that it might seem like, well, that's a little bit overkill or maybe kind of killing a need with fire. But if you have two guys, two guys that you believe are second contract players, Randy Gregory and then Bradley Chubb, and then you have a rookie contract and a player like Boye Mafe coming off the edge, Cody, to me, that would be a really wise usage of trading up into the first round. Again, you don't always want to trade up to address a specific need. You want to get the best possible player. And I think Boye Mafe, to me, He's a double-digit sack kind of guy. So I know that might not be everybody's answer or maybe their favorite answer, but that's the kind of guy that I would go up for, a freakish athlete who plays at a premium position and who could start for you right away if need be. I like that too because everyone's thinking, oh, Kayvon Thibodeau is Aiden Hutchinson, David Ajabo, even though he won't play in 2022 due to his Achilles. I like Boye Mafe, an underrated guy. As you mentioned, he's one guy that I, I watched our Pro Football Network uh, draft analyst, Ollie Hodgkinson, had a great interview with him. I tuned into that. He's got a great head on his shoulders as well, which is something that George Payton looks at. Captains on and off the field, and good football players. I mean, that might be an option here for this Denver Broncos team here. The next question comes in from Ruckafella21. He says, has there been any advancement in the ownership situation? And I'll touch on this quickly because there's really not much to address to it. The last thing that I saw, there was no advancement there. However, I saw that there was a potential appeal, in a sense, from the Kaiser estate to be able to try to you know lay claim to it, which could take another couple of years, or it could take a while longer there. But obviously, the, the proceeds of the sell are planned to go forward as planned here. So the expectations that the Broncos will have a brand new owner to start up the 2022 NFL season. We hear a little bit more. Obviously, we'll cover it here on Lockdown Broncos. But Sarah, here's one that I'm really excited to answer here. It comes from Bob Garcia. He says, how is Ezero Evro's quarter defense different than from what Fangio did? How do you think it would affect current players? Who benefits and who will struggle? And I would say the hardest part right now, Sarah, about maybe trying to project what a Giro Evro's defense will look like is the fact that he's a first-time D.C., and we don't actually know what his defensive play-calling style will actually look like. He's coached, and he's been part of coaching staffs with some great defensive minds like Vic Fangio, obviously with Monty Kiffin. He's got Dom Capers as a senior assistant. There's a lot of knowledge that he's been around, a lot of people he's been around, where he could take, I think, a little bit of everything from those coaches that he's coached with and maybe turn that into something, especially here for this Broncos defense. I think the looks will stay the same. You're still going to see out of the base defense, Defense is going to be a 3-4. However, I think the Broncos have been a lot more nickel and dime this season. So nickel, five DBs, and dime, you're going to have six DBs out of the two high safety look. I do think, though, Sarah, and I'm eager for your thoughts on this, I do believe that Giro Evero will be a little bit more aggressive in terms of sending blitz after opposing offenses and opposing quarterbacks in comparison to what we saw with Vic Fangio. The hope is that you have the right personnel to be able to get home. Right, right. And I just, Cody, I just caught myself nodding at what you were saying. I mean, I just need to acknowledge that, that I wasn't just mindly doing it. I was paying attention <laughs> to what you were saying. There was a great a, YouTube engaging. comment about that, like, your yeah. neck has got to hurt from all the time yeah. you nod, brother. I mean, yeah. like I said, yeah. we, we get workouts in here on the show I, still. We do, yeah. I'm doing bicep curls down under my desk right here. Nobody, nobody really knows that. But <laughs> I was actually going to mention, Cody, specifically what you just did and that the, the big difference that I – foresee happening because you're right we don't know exactly what the scheme is going to look like but the big difference that I'm seeing or, or at least anticipating is is this pass rush philosophy right I mean it sounds like Ezero Evero maybe got a quick glimpse at what the Broncos did last year and decided right away I'm going to send additional pressure as needed because I think Fangio was almost kind of bullish on 
four guys getting home at, at, yeah. at all times. And so I think that we're going to see a different philosophy there. If four guys aren't getting home, Ezero Evero is not going to be afraid to send five. And if five guys aren't, af- aren't getting home, he's not going to be afraid to send six. And you could go on the LeBron tangent and say, if not six, then seven, not seven, <laughs> eight, you know? So <laughs> I, I think we're going to see a much better – uh, it, and I say better because I prefer that kind of aggressive mentality. I think I was one of the many fans sitting at their TV, like, "What are you doing? Like, it's not working. Get send figure more. out a way to get home. <laughs> send them. Send the boys home." So I think that definitely that is something that resonates with me, and I'm excited to see that. And I think that obviously we've talked about we had a whole episode dedicated to Baron Browning moving to the edge or maybe kind of like a hybrid role. Excited to see the plans that they have for him. Excited. To to see how they continually utilize Josie Jewell now that he's back, a very good blitzing linebacker. And obviously there's athleticism kind of in abundance at that position, right? Jonas Griffith, we'll see who they bring in through the draft. We'll see if there's any additional free agents. So I'm I'm pumped. I think that's going to be the biggest difference for me is just how he approaches getting after opposing quarterbacks. I'm stoked to see what Ezero Evero has planned for this Broncos defense and always appreciate your interaction in Broncos country. Always appreciate getting Sarah's insight opposite of mine. I, I really enjoy the way that he and I view things. And I love the interactions. I love the thoughts that Broncos country shares with us on various topics related to this football team. Your interaction means a lot, Broncos country. Hey, and real quick, we just launched what is the biggest Denver Broncos community on Twitter. Now, communities are a brand new feature and you may or may not have access to it yet but if you do make sure you find the denver broncos community i've posted it on my twitter feed make sure you send a request to join it is all broncos talk you unite with a lot of broncos fans in one specific place we talk all things denver broncos there join the community today on twitter but with that said sarah hey look we got a lot going on this week we'll find out the broncos make any more moves but what fans can look forward to this week on lockdown broncos we will be going through and grading the free agency moves that george Payton and this broncos team as may you get that and much more here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.